Stay tuned. God has a word just for you. Good day, good day to you, my listening audience. It is a privilege and a pleasure of mine to be back with you again, wherever you are at this time, tuning in. I pray that you will enjoy this word today because I believe this word will motivate you and inspire you to trust in the Lord. And so if you are tuning in, I want you to like, I want you to subscribe, I want you to tell a friend, call someone and let them know that Pastor Kalma is proclaiming the word of God. And so at this time, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Job chapter 14. I'm reading verses 10 through verse 15. That's Job chapter 14, reading verse 10 through verse 15. But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and as the floods decayed and dried up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, till thy wrath be past that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the works of thine hand. And just for a short while, I want to just speak to you on the thought, three kinds of death, three kinds of death. Let us pray. Eternal Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, I honor, bless, and praise you for this another chance and opportunity to share your word with the people of God. I pray that your word will go forth with clarity, power, and conviction that lives will be challenged. And Father, I will be careful to praise you. This I ask in no other name, but in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Amen and amen. Three kinds of death. When we look around in our world and see how our world is being bombarded with this coronavirus, we need to understand that God let us know that death is real. And just for a while, I want to just share a few passages of scripture on death. The first passage is found over in the book of Genesis chapter 2 and I'm looking at verse 17 that reads, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So this has to do with death. Also, if we look over in the book of Job, chapter 16, verse 22, it reads thus, When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. After being alive for a few years, he declared, I will go the way whence I shall not return. Then over in the book of Romans, chapter 6, Verse 23, it reads thus, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But he let us know the wages of sin is death. So death is real. Death is real in our world and we are experiencing this corona. And during this time, we have more deaths than ever. Listen to this word that I want to share with you. Death is the child of our direct foe. For sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Sin entered into, into the world and death by sin. Death is an alien in this world. It did not enter into the original design of the unfallen creation, but its intrusion mars and spoils the whole. It is not a part of the great shepherd's flock, but it is a wolf which cometh to kill and to steal and to destroy. Like the Bible declare in St. John chapter 10 verse 10, For the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal and destroy. But I am come that you might have life 
and have it more abundantly. So we know that death comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Death is well called an enemy, for it does the work of an enemy. For what purpose does an enemy come but to root up and to pull down and to destroy? Death tears in pieces the comely handiwork of God, the fabric of the human body, so marvelously wrought by the fingers of divine skill, casting this rich embroidery into the grave among the armies of the worms. So death is an enemy. The world average death rate before Corona was that every second three persons will die. And so in one minute, 180 persons will leave this world according to the average world rate. And so in an hour, you would have like 10,800 persons would die in one hour. Let's take it to two hours. In two hours, you would have 21,600 persons will die. In three hours, you would have 32,000 400 persons will leave this world and that has nothing to do with Corona. Just in the United States alone, they declare that every day they have up to 4,000 persons that will leave this world. And listen, if you are not included in that number, you have a right to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory right where you are. Right where you are, it's time to lift your hand and to thank God because God has kept you thus far. Almost a year has passed since we faced this coronavirus. And listen here, if you are alive, you have a right to give God praise, honor, and glory. Listen, 4,000 a day in the United States. What do you think about other countries? How many folks are, are dying from this coronavirus in one day? I'm telling you, that's why we need to make sure that we know Jesus Christ as our personal savior. Now the Bible let us know about three kinds of death. The first death is called spiritual death. Spiritual death, it means separation from God because of sin. Separation from God because of sin. And quickly, if you would turn your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 59. Come on, Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading verse 2 in your hearing. Isaiah 59 and verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So sin separates us from God. It's called spiritual death. This is what happened to Adam when he ate of the tree that God told him not to eat of. He died spiritually with God. He died. He lost that relationship with God. And the Bible declared that after 130 years, he had a son by the name of Seth, which indicates Adam lived for another 930 years before he died physically. So the first death we see here is called spiritual death. Hallelujah. And so let's go a little further and look at it. Over here in the book of Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8 has to do with spiritual death because here in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus was, amen, receiving disciples and an individual said to him in Matthew chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 21 and 22. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. What was he saying here? Let the spiritual dead bury the physical dead, but you come and follow me. So it tells you that you have a whole lot of people living in this world who are dead spiritually. Hallelujah. Now, one more passage we want to look at concerning spiritual death, and it has to do with Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. If you can, go with me 
to Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verses 1 through verse 4. Listen. And you have you quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So if you are spiritually dead, you are living in your sins. If you are doing things that God is not pleased with, and so you are severed or separated from the presence of God. So that has to do with spiritual death. If you find yourself just enjoying life and carousing and living all kind of lifestyle without recognizing Jesus Christ as your personal savior and living a good life, you are dead spiritually. You are cut off from God. Then secondly, there is physical death, physical death. Physical death, hallelujah, separation of the inner man from the outer man. So there is an inner man and the Bible let us know that there is an outer man. So what happens when an individual dies physically is the inner man leaves the outer man. And just for a while, if you can, go with me to Romans chapter 7 and looking at verse 22. Romans chapter 7, looking at verse 22. For we know that the hope of, Rome, sorry, Romans chapter 7, verse 22, and it reads thus, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So here, the word of God let us know that there is an inner man. Let's take it a little further and let's look at, amen, if, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Listen to the word. For which cause we think not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So here he's talking to us again about an outer man and an inner man. See, the outer man is the body, hallelujah, but the inner man is the soul and spirit. Well, let's go a little further and let's read maybe one or two more passages that deals with the inner man, hallelujah. Well, let's go again, sorry, to uh, Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 16. Listen to what Paul has to say to us. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. See, he's strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Then when the word of God talks to us about a woman's beauty, hallelujah, he goes to the extent over in 1 Peter chapter 3, reading uh, around verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3, reading verse 4, he's talking about the real beauty of a woman. A woman can be beautiful on the outside, but what he's dealing with now is the real beauty, amen, that cannot be a uh, destroyed when you take a shower you get rid of your eye wrinkles and all of the other stuff amen that has to do with outward beauty but here he's going to show us inward beauty he says in verse 3 in first peter chapter uh, 3 and verse 3 i'm reading 3 and 4 Who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of the plating of the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on of apparels, verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament, even the dressing of a meek and quiet spirit 
which is in the sight of God, a great price. So here he talks to us about the inner man. Now let's see what happened when the inner man leave the outer man. If you can, go with me to the book of James chapter 2 and I'm looking at verse 26. That's James chapter 2 looking at verse 26. Listen. For as the body without the spirit is dead. See, when the inner man leave the outer man, amen, it dies. Because what would cause an individual to raise his hand is the inner man, the man on the inside, the soul and the spirit that cause one to lift their hands or to move their feet. Amen. It's that inner man. But when the inner man leave, the body, amen, dies. The body dies because it's the inner man that keeps the body alive. But let's go a little further. And so we talk about, amen, spiritual death. And secondly, we talk about physical death. Now, thirdly, we want to talk about eternal death. Eternal death. Total separation from God because a man choosing, amen, to separate himself from God by sin. He made up his mind that, hey, I'm not going to give my life to the Lord. I'm not going to serve the Lord. And this individual died not knowing Jesus Christ as his or her personal Savior. So they die now, not only physically, but they die an eternal death total separation from God. And so let's look at this over in the book of Matthew chapter 10. I'm looking at verse 28. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. Here uh, Jesus now talking about it. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So now we see that the individual is lost eternally, so both his soul and body at the final analysis will be cast into Gehenna, the lake of fire. But let's continue to look at it, amen, and read a few more passages. The first one we're going to look at again is Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at verse 41. Matthew chapter 25. 25 verse 41 and then we would just read verse 46 also Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41 listen then shall he say also to them on his left hand depart from me ye curse into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels notice that hell or Gehenna the lake of fire was not prepared for man it was prepared for the devil and his angels but because men decide to follow the devil they would also go with him where he would be cast into eternal fire sit down to verse 46 and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. See, he said the wicked shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life, into everlasting life. And so that's why as a child of God, you need to continue to live for God let nothing separate you from God. And so we see here that he talks about uh, eternal death. Well, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and let's look at verse 11. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 11. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the, unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So eternal death means the second death. It's after an individual die physically, amen, and they stand before God, they will have to die again spiritually. And this is the death in the lake of fire. And so he says in verse 11 again, he that had an heir, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt 
of the second death. Then we go now to Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 11, and this has to do with the great white throne judgment. Listen, Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books was open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea give up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered the dead which was in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the eternal death is to be cast into the lake of fire. If you die without Jesus Christ now, you go to what is called the torment department and you wait there until Revelation chapter the 20 and verse 11 through verse 15 is fulfilled when the great white throne judgment takes place. I want to just give you one more passage, amen, of scripture found in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Revelation 21 and verse 8, which still deals with, hallelujah, the eternal death. Hallelujah, and it reads thus. But the fearful, unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, homongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Neighbors and friends, you don't need to go to hell. You don't need to go to the lake of fire. That's why God has given you ample time. And doing this corona is a good time to trust Jesus Christ with your soul to give your life to him to repent and turn everything over to God I'm telling you if you do that and if you die five minutes from now heaven will be your no home I encourage you to open your heart and give Jesus a chance in your life right where you are father in the name of Jesus every individual that's listening to this program that do not know you as the Lord and personal Savior I ask that you would speak to them, save them, give them victory over sin that they will be able to live with you. I ask it in Jesus name and so until next time I want you to like I want you, amen, to comment I want you to subscribe I'm telling you God is up to something and I need you to be encouraged to serve God God bless you and see you again next time in Jesus name, amen Thank you for watching the Foresight Baptist Church. Comment and subscribe.